a song today and I've brought myself I am your sacrifice I am one of the song today I brought myself Lord I am your worship I am one of the song
Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, eh. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. And the sound of rejoicing.
this morning just lift Jesus up call him the names he deserves he's a good God he's a kind God he's a great God he is merciful he is beautiful beyond the scripture he is Jesus our strength Jesus our banner Jesus our keeper Jesus our rock Jesus our lover Jesus our helper Jesus our ever present help in time of need Jesus our ever sufficiency with Jesus we can never run out with Jesus we can never run dry Youths in the house he is the one that sustains your soul Youths in the house he is the one that keeps your bones free this morning worship the great God worship the great God Worship the great God. Nobody takes your space, God. Nobody takes your space, God. You are God in the beginning. You are God today. And you are God forever. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. We worship you this morning, God. We worship you this morning, Jesus. Words are not enough to tell you how you are to us, God. We worship you. Worship your holy name, Jesus. We exalt you, Father. Thank you for being beautiful. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder
Go ahead and give him the fruit of your lips. Go ahead and bless him. Call him his name. Oh God of wonders. Shalibrados equaquatea. Shabaranda tuskalibrande. Jilekota wakwatenia. Zalibrados silebrantus kalia. Shagadagada. Madiana gote gote. Father, we bless you. 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 Father, we say thank 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 you. The Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Go ahead and ask the Lord. Go ahead and thank him for his mercy. Thank you for keeping you. Thank you for keeping your family. Thank you for keeping everything that concerns you. Go ahead. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your mercy over our lives, over our families, over the church of God, over the nation. Lord, we say thank you. Oh, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Let the Lord hear your voice this morning. Let the Lord hear your voice this morning. Let the Lord hear your voice this morning. He says, as you have spoken to my hearing, so will I do. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let the Lord hear your voice. Shalabrados kelebrande geduza. Jalika parush kalabados ekwa kwatenia. Zile korandes keble gades. Zile kos kebrande gados. Zile konda rus katigada. Madigado shana. The Lord reign. Blessed be the Lord. Leather of my son. Shalago celebratiga. Oh. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the Lord, let the rock of salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth, the Lord.
Father, we say thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you worship. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you for all you have done. Father, we bless you. Shali brasco pelegedi. Zile katos kali brande gedos. Zile ko brande legedos. Zile kandu shala brande geduza. Father, we bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to sing this last song as we welcome the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Jesus is the baptizer. He baptizes us with the Holy Ghost. And we are calling this name. I call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's who you are. I call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you call that name with revelation, it has us. Call that name with revelation. He has been exalted far above all principalities. He says he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Far above all names, every dominion, every king. Father, we bless you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have called upon this mighty name. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Youth in the house, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Um, this morning we are going to have um, a little competition. Praise the Lord. It's a game. It's called Sword Drill. Um, I'm sure maybe some of us have participated in it in some time ago or in the past. But then we are going to have a Sword Drill this morning. And I want us to join our hands together as the following brethren um, join us here. Uh, join us here. Uh, sir, media, please, you help us to... Uh -huh. Amen. Brochas, please let's appreciate God as he comes. Come with your Bible. Um, Bro Joseph. Bro Joseph. Sister Chidima. Amen. Mr. Ope. Let's appreciate God for him as he comes, Mr. Ope. Bro Chideberry. And um, Bro Adi. Amen. Um, two people are going to join, but let's do this. Um, please, let's file out here. Now, this is our line. Let me just, okay. Good. Amen. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now, this, these are the instructions. We have 10 minutes, so we have to be fast with this. Um, amen. We are going to have two segments. The first segment we are going to call a Bible, a Bible book, chapter, and verse. Now, when you open, when you open, this is what you do. Place your hand on the verse. The moment you step on this line, you don't look at your Bible, just look out straight. You don't sh shake your hand, you don't move your hand. You get it? If you don't get it, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let me take it again. When you open, for instance, I say Genesis 1 1. As soon as you open, you don't read, you don't do anything. Put your hand on verse 1. Then you step out. When you step out, you are not going to look at your Bible again. You just look front. Your hand remains there. You don't shift, you don't go up. Is that understood? Amen. They say, no, you don't read it. Just put your hand. Yes. There, don't read it. Amen. So let's, let's, do, let's take an example. This is an example. So it's not going to. Um, okay. Please, I need somebody on the keyboard. 25 seconds for each one. 25 seconds with stopwatch. Who has a stopwatch? Either the keyboard is or whoever have a stopwatch. 25 seconds. Um, Sister Joy is taking the scores. Thank you. God bless you. The first person that comes out, okay, we have seven persons here. Okay, I should repeat the names again. Um, these brochures. Um, Bro Joseph, Sister Chidima, um, Mr. Okpe, Mr. Ah. Uh, don't worry. Amen. If you have if you have books, papers in your Bible, please let me remove them. You have books, paper. If your paper, um, if your Bible has this rope, just pull it out. <laughs> Amen. Please, somebody should help me with the Bible. Thank you. We'll collect your Bible back. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. Okay, if you have papers, please, somebody should help me with the Bible again. One Bible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you will have. All right. So, um, soldiers of the Lord. Amen. Now, this is, this is an example. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. 
25 seconds. <laughs> Amen. Let me see your hand. All right, good. Thank, thank you. So, if you step out and you step back, don't step front again. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I think we've gotten the... Amen. All right, so, um, the place is already filled, so let's just go with this number. Close your Bibles. Yeah. Show us your sword. This is how you show us your sword. Yeah. Good. Stretch forth your sword. Good. Number one. Until I say open. Job 28, verse 28. Hold on. Until I say open. Amen. Amen. Show us your sword. Job 28, verse 28. Job 28, verse 28. Open. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, read. And he said to man, Behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Amen. Please, hope you are noting as they came out. Okay, thank you. Let's go back. Second one. Show us your Bible. First Corinthians 1 verse 25. Amen. Please, until we say open. <laughs> Amen. James 1 verse... <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Brothers, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Amen. Amen. James 1 verse 5. James, James 1 verse 5. Open. Amen. Amen. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and obey it not, and it shall be given unto him. Okay. Um, let's go back. Show us your sword. Show us your sword. Show us your sword. Please, I have to say it two times and then I tell you open. Jude chapter 2 verse 26. Jude chapter 2 verse 26. Open. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, okay. I cancel it. What, what you are supposed to do is for you to step out and tell me there is no Jude. Amen. So let's go to the second session. Amen. Nobody got it. I'm going to read a verse. You look for it. One. Please, until I finish reading. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For God not sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Thank you. Now, I'll give you expo. All the scriptures I'm going to say, they are very, a verse before them or a verse after them is very, very popular. Very, very popular. John 3.16. If you know John 3.16, you should be able to know this. Okay? The next one. 
Show us your sword. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Open. Amen. Amen. All right, so we'll go back. They all got it. You know as they came. The last one. The last one. The last one. Okay. Only be thou strong. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, thou, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Um, amen. Please, you can go back. You can go back. Amen. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. It's not easy. It's not easy. Sister Joy, is he ready? Amen. Okay. Um, the results will be... Uh, INEC will get the result ready, and by the time pastor comes later, uh, maybe we'll get the result across to us. Praise the Lord. Putting those hands together, let's put it together well. Amen. This morning we'll be looking at a sermon. It's titled, An Excellent Youth. How many excellent youth do we have in the house this morning? We saw some of them right now. And we'll be looking at Daniel. Daniel 6, 3. Please open your Bibles while we wait for the media. Daniel 6, verse 3. It says, Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other presidents and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Daniel was a young person just like you and I. And whatever introduced Daniel was the spirit of excellence. Amen. As believers, we are not meant to remain at the same level every single time. The day you give your life to Christ, the spirit of excellence come upon you. It comes upon you. Amen. If today you read the Bible one minute, tomorrow you should be able to add one more minute to it. Amen. That's what makes you excellent. Why should you be excellent? Genesis 1.27. I'll be opening Genesis 1.31 as well. Genesis 1.27 says, we were made in the image and the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Just the simple call to be image bearers alone is a call to excellence. Amen. Why? Because your father is excellent. So you should also portray the same thing. Amen. Because the Bible says in Genesis 1.31 that after Jesus had finished creating everything he created, what happened? He looked at it and it was what? It was beautiful. It was good. It was perfect. So everything you lay your hands on should be perfect. Hallelujah. Excellence requires exposure. It requires consistent development. Amen. Outsmarting not somebody's weave on. You are not smarting somebody's dress or shoe. Youth in the house, young people, we are fond of always wanting to compete. Amen. With somebody else. This race is between you and yourself. Amen. It's between you and yourself, not you and someone else. So today, if you did good today, tomorrow you should do better. Hallelujah. When people look at you, they should see something beautiful and excellent coming out of you. Amen. 
when the when the evil spirit came upon Saul, what happened? I don't know, but I believe every castle, every kingdom, every president's house would have musicians. But what did the servant say? They said, call a skillful player. Amen. They didn't say call anybody who knows how to play the drums or call anybody who knows how to serve. They say call who? A skillful player. When the Bible says the gift of a man will place him before kings, anybody can drive a car, but not everybody will win the Formula One race. Amen. It takes somebody who understands going beyond washing the car, looking good to certain stunts that put you at the forefront. Hallelujah. So today I want us to be intentional about the way we live our lives and who we are. As an excellent youth in the house of God, a believer, your light should shine. When people see things every other person does, when they see yours, people should be able to say, the only person that could have done this is sister, this person. Amen. The only person that could have done this is brother, this person. I, need to, I, I beg, I need to talk about someone, my pastor's wife. I just have to talk about her. When you score songs, we score songs just because, okay, let me score the song just. But you see that woman, she scores the song and tells you where they make a mistake. Amen. It goes beyond just, let me just learn the song. That is a spirit of excellence upon a person. Hallelujah. That is what God has called us to. Amen. Daniel 1.20, the A part says, as for every matter, I'm using the new American standard, Daniel 1.20, as for every matter of expertise and excellence and understanding about the, about the kingdom, the king consulted them. Everything that had to do with excellence. The king had to look for Shadrach, Meshach, Abed. It's not like he didn't have magicians or people who could do it. But he knew these people, whatever they laid their hands on, something beautiful always comes out of it. Hallelujah. That should be our testimony. Amen. That should be our testimony. How is your walk with God? Those in the choir, how do you do your things? How do you sing your song? Do you sing it just because you want to sing it? Do you do it just because you want to do it? But do it with the whole of your body, the whole of your soul, the whole of your heart. Amen. Let us climb to that extent because that is what God wants for us. Amen. I will go up to, to the last one. 1 Kings 10, 23, 24. 1 Kings Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And the whole earth did what is sought to the presence of Solomon. Why? Because it was excellent. Because everything he did, there was a touch of gold and diamond on it. Hallelujah. That is what God is calling us to this morning. And for you to be excellent, you require spiritual wisdom. Amen. When they tell everybody, I need all the staff here, the five of you, go to Alnada. I want you to tell me how many shops are in Alnada. Are we together? But because you have the spirit of excellence in you, when other people come out and count five shops, you will come out and count five shops and tell them the names of the shops and tell them the products they sell. Amen. That is somebody who has the spirit of excellence. And I see God taking us there. If you want excellence, your assignment this morning, who I don't know if, if the preacher would give you the expo, is James 1.5. If you need excellence, if you need spiritual wisdom, James 1.5 will do the work for you. I see the Lord raising us to be excellent youth in the house. God bless us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord! It's time for offering. Let's bless God with our substance. Amen. The things that are impossible ah, yeah. The things money cannot buy They are the things that he has done for me
Viva Off Ruiz.
from the little you've given to us, from the abundance of you've given to us, we've given just a little. Accept it in the mighty name of Jesus. For whatever to be used for it to be to your glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that desire to give, genuinely, but they don't have. By this time next week, Lord, they will be part of the people that will give in the mighty name of Jesus. Our hands will not run dry. We will continue to give and give and give in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we know you are already with us. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Hallelujah. Somebody holler wholesome. You in the house, holler wholesome. Somebody holler Jesus. Praise the Lord. With the youth of the house, yes, we have a special number for us. Remain blessed.
name of Jesus. Can ever block me from His hands? No part of it. No scheme of man. Somebody holla horse.
and let the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. Firstly, I want to thank um, our Father in Heaven for a privilege like this. Giving unto the church and unto our Father in the Lord. I just want to bless him because it's a privilege. And I want to thank our Father in the Lord, our shepherd and our leader for giving the youth this opportunity. As I speak today, I won't speak my words, but the words of God in Jesus' name. I just want to crave your indulgence this morning to open your heart. I want you to unlearn right now because you're about to learn something different. I know you may have been hearing about wisdom, 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 spiritual wisdom, spiritual wisdom. But today I need you to open your heart because that's the only way the Lord can manifest in you and through you. And I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of our understanding today in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, I would like for us to see the book of First Kings chapter 17 and we'll read just a few verses because it's a lengthy one. First Kings 17, 1 to 16. First Kings 17, 1 to 16. And it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chireth, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cheret that is before Jordan. Please pause here. I just want to make us understand something. Before I proceed. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is the wisdom of God. And Jesus is the word of God. The sure word of prophecy of God. How do I know this? Media, you don't need to open it. In the book of John 1, you'll find it there. Okay? I just want us to get this clear. And this word coming unto the man of God, Elisha. I want us to understand that God speaks part time. What he told you yesterday, the wisdom he revealed to you yesterday is not what he's revealing to you today. He reveals his wisdom to you according to circumstances, according to situation. So if you read John 3.16 yesterday, that John 3.16 you read yesterday is not the same today because our God is not a static God. Our God is a dynamic God. He's a potent force, always in motion. This was a man of God that caused the land by his word in the previous verses that there will be no rain for years. But then God asked him to leave the land. And God said, I will feed you with raven. Mind you, raven is the stingiest bird. That's God's wisdom. He's using his own ways, his own wisdom to conform the wisdom of man. Raven is the stingiest bird. To man, it is impossible. To man, it's not, it's not even, you can't even phantom it for raven to come. He has not. The bird hasn't fed his own offsprings. Not to talk of feeding a man to the point that you feed till you are satisfied. This was the case here. So as we proceed, we'll get to understand that our God is a God of dynamics. Please move to the next verse. Verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land, even where the man of God went to, it dried up. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, God speaking to him again. There is a word per time, a word of wisdom per time. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow, a widow woman there to sustain you. I have commanded a widow. So I want us to understand today that God's wisdom 
has already made provisions for you and I. The thing there is for you and me to be obedient. As his spirit is speaking to you, you obey and move. Arise and go ye to Zarephath. He arose and he went. Prompt obedience is key if you want the wisdom of God or the spirit of wisdom of God to manifest in your life. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Continue. I want us to get something. Please follow me. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. In her common sense, it is over. Kalas will just eat and die. Because there is drought, there is famine. Okay? And as we proceed, you get to understand that the flour that is left in our house is just a handful. It won't even be enough to bake parata that will feed herself and the kid. So let's proceed. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do thou Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. Did she, did she succumb? Let's see. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Proceed. And she went, she went, she didn't question. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he, that's the son, and her house did it many days. Initially there was a flower, a handful of flour. But they did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah, according to the wisdom of God. To man, it is impossible. But with God, when he steps in, the barrel of meal will never go, go empty. This is the case of the widow of Zarephath. Even when the man of God was instructing her, she would be like, what is happening? What is wrong with this man? I just told him I have just this little of flour. Why will he be telling me to make for him first? There is drought in the land. There is famine. I just lost my job in UAE. I don't have anywhere to lay my head. God, what are you saying? The Lord is telling you to dance and praise him in that situation. It might sound stupid. It might sound ridiculous when you are hungry. God is telling you, dance and praise me. I will use myself as an example. When I was in school, um, by God's grace, I wasn't lacking anything. But there was this occasion I lacked. Okay? And I was having just five naira on me. And in school then, in the chapel, I was one of the escorts. I was having just five naira. And I know that the Lord said, do not appear before me empty. And that five naira, if I give it, I won't have anything to eat. I won't even be able to buy pure water. I won't even be able to buy because, yeah, I had gari, dried gari. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to buy not to soak with the gari. I cried that day sincerely for the first time in my life. Big boy, you had just five naira. What I did, the word of the Lord dropped in my heart that I should lift that five naira up and praise him. So while they are singing, offering time, blessing time, people are dancing. I know I didn't envelope my five naira. I publicized my five naira with Jesus joy in my heart. I lie not. And I danced. I was waving it. I was dancing, sweating. And when the basket came, I dropped my five naira. 
could you believe that from where I least expected that day evening, I drank Gary when I got back to the hostel. Some of us will be discouraged that at, in the end I'm drinking Gary, nothing to it. But believe you me, that day when I got back to the hostel, in the evening, I got a call from home and I received times 200 of what I dropped. My aunt sent me 20K and I became the big boy for Christ again. What I'm saying in essence, when the word of the Lord drops, don't doubt. When the word of wisdom drops, don't doubt. That is God speaking to you. That is God speaking to you expressly through the spirit of wisdom. And mind you, those words are Christ. According to the book of John. I defined here that spirituality or spiritual is relating to sacred matters. Why wisdom is the ability to discern, to have insight and good sense of judgment. So putting the two of them together, I would say that spiritual wisdom is the ability to discern sacred matters or gain insight into things of, the, of life or of the world. When the world is going this way, you are going this way. Reverend Obweli of Dominion City once said that whenever there is Christmas celebration, people are traveling to their villages to see loved ones, that he doesn't travel with his family. It is when the world is returning back from the village, that's when he's going. Like second week in general, that's wisdom. God told him, don't go so, so, so time. You should go. So we should learn to listen when God is speaking. And mind you, wisdom is specific to situations. It's specific to you. It's not generic. It's not like man's wisdom. When you're hungry, you know, oh, I need to fill the stomach. No. If it's, if it's like that, then everybody will have it. But in this kingdom, when you are hungry, God will tell you, my brother, fast and dance for me. With this, your hungry state, I need you to go in, into the streets and evangelize. Have you been hungry under this UAE sun before? I have. When I was searching for job, trekking everywhere. You'll be feeling cold. I was feeling cold. Under the sun, you'll be feeling cold because of hunger pangs. So, it's, it, to the human mind, you can't phantom it. But God knows what is ahead of you. That is why he's giving you that wisdom statement at that time. It is, it is your prompt obedience to that word that came through the spirit of God that will activate the blessings. It is in your obedience to the spirit of wisdom, to the words of wisdom that will activate the blessings of God in your life. Because if you say you want to do it by yourself, trust me, by strength shall no man prevail. Life is spiritual, hence we should treat it as such. We are spirit beings in an earthly vessel. Bear it in mind that Jesus is the manifold wisdom of God the Father Almighty. The wisdom of the kingdom is Christocentric. The wisdom of God is Christ. It's centered on Christ. Whatever you've been hearing from this altar, it, it all centers on Christ. It all, I'm not talking about those teaching heresy. Those that are teaching the rawness, the pureness of the word. It's all centered on Christ. Even if I should turn this topic upside down and say wisdom spiritual, I will still draw you to Christ. So you should understand the fact that everything in the kingdom no matter how reverse it looks, it's Christocentric. If you want to effectively succeed in life as a Christian, you should, by his wisdom, build a robust structure of a robust structure of a lifestyle that will help you maintain focus. Like I said, learn to obey once you hear. And secondly, learn to maintain focus. Let your eye not be here and there. Don't be like of the sea that the wind tosses here and there by every sound of doctrine. Today you're in, today you're out. Today you're hot, today. Learn to stay put. If you want to serve the Lord, serve him with all fervency of heart. Remain there and tell him, Lord, I know this and this is not showing forth now. But at thy word, at thy word, that is what the fisherman told, fisherman told Christ. Lord, we have toiled all night and day. 
Year in, year out. No fishes. Even the least tightest fish we couldn't catch. But Lord, at thy word, that is Christ telling them, cast here. But they said, at thy, they obeyed at thy word. This should be our statement every time. Even Christ, which is the wisdom of God, at a certain time, he said, Lord, if it is thy will, let it be done. So we should get to that point where we say, Lord, thy will, at thy word, let it be so. At thy word, let it be so. Part time, whatever we're doing. I know it's hard as humans, as youth, we want to show our, our muscles, we want to flex our skills. But we should bear it in mind that we are not the sole custodian of our souls. We will give account of whatever we do. So we should learn to listen because one thing I've come to understand is God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So he, since he is the creator of the universe, he owns everything that is in it. Even the things that are beneath the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. You can imagine how big he is. So why not depend on him? Why not obey when he speaks part time? Wisdom is practically God's voice. God's voice speaking to your heart, speaking to your spirit. So I'm encouraging us this day to always obey and maintain focus. It takes wisdom to build a house. According to Proverbs 20, 24 verse 3a. It takes wisdom to build a house. Now, I will just share um, um, a brief light on types of wisdom. According to the book of James 3, 13 to 17, we have the earthly, the sensual, and the devilish. I'll put these together. The earthly, the sensual, and the devilish. If you read the book of James 3, from verse 13 to 17, you find it there. Mind you, these three types of wisdom, you might see it as beneficial, but trust me, in the end is destruction. You might do, you might cut corners in your office to make the money, to make the extra figures. You might cheat people in your neighborhood, in the community, just to be there. But trust me, it won't last the test of time. Wait upon the Lord. Hear from him what he has to tell you. And I see God blessing us and giving us the strength to wait on him part time in Jesus name. The fourth one is the divine wisdom. I liken the spiritual wisdom, the topic to divine, divine wisdom. Do you want to be counted wise? I'm reading from the message translation now, James 3, 13 to 17. Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you should do. Live well. Live wisely. Live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing, like the father thing, okay, from wisdom. It's animal cunning. Just like the serpent that came in a cunning way to deceive Eve in the garden. It's animal cunning and it's devilish plotting. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throat. You want to do everything by all means to get it. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life. And is characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable. Overflowing with mercy and blessings. Not hot one day and cold the next. Not too faced. Now I have this to tell us. This type of wisdom is not the wisdom of the world. Which is universal in application. Example, if you're hungry. The worldly sense of wisdom. You eat. But in the same scenario, God can ask you to dance, which I already say. Spiritual wisdom is the wisdom behind people doing what does not make sense and they are still getting results. Spiritual wisdom is what is behind people, backing people, men of God, sons and daughters of God, who are doing 
things that you think are not reasonable, but they are getting tangible results. Hallelujah. I see God opening our eyes of understanding today in Jesus' name. They are not making sense is that they are not doing it as directed. Hallelujah. It's not making sense to you because you're seeing them. They are not doing it as they are direct, as the earth direct or as the sensual mind direct. According to the book of 2 Kings verse 5, spiritual wisdom is a power tool to getting things done with ease in God's kingdom. That is if your obedience is in place. It is ever potent, transforming God's children, thereby making our lives a wonder, a sign, and a testimony. Hallelujah. With spiritual wisdom in place, your prayer point reduces to an extent because all you have to do is obey his voice when he speaks to your spirit. You don't need to be praying for a car. When the time is right, he will speak to you. Get a car. So today, if you've been praying for a car in the name of Jesus, that prayer has been answered. No need to pray. You're wasting time. There are other things to pray for. Pray for God's kingdom to be established here on earth. Pray for souls. There are missionaries that are out there in the field that are, that are experiencing persecution every day. Pray for them. For God to equip them on a daily basis. Stop praying for material things. Because the book of Matthew 6.33 has made you and I understand that when you seek those things that are, that are in regards to God's kingdom, every other thing will come running after you. So don't waste your time. Do away with the frivolities on your prayer altar. As I begin to round up very quickly, how to get this wisdom? We've been talking spiritual wisdom, spiritual wisdom. How can I get it? How can I gain access? Number one, you must show a heart of thirsty. Like you must thirst for it. You must hunger for it. And you must seek it with all honesty of heart in prayer. Because wisdom is manifested in prayer. The book of Matthew 5 verse 6 made us understand that. And Matthew 7 verse 7 to 8. And James 1 verse 5. Let's see Matthew 5 verse 6 please. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, after wisdom, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. And the second one is studying God's word and meditating in his word. You study. If it's John, I, always, I don't know, I like using John 3 verse 16 because it's the simplest. Even the kids know it. Okay? But it's not as simple as it is. If you study, if you read John 3 verse 16, meditate on it. As you're going on the way, you meditate on it. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. In your own path, on your own path, what are you giving? What are you giving back to God? You should meditate. It should sink deep into you. The book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 which says, study to show yourself approved. And Joshua 1 verse 8, 8 which says, this book of the law should not depart from your heart, but you should meditate. Please, let's see Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. That obedience you must observe and to do. There is result. There, there are prices in the doing. It's not all about you meditating and reading it. It's in the doing you get the reward. Hallelujah. It's in the doing you get the result. And the third one is genuine stewardship. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2. Genuine stewardship. Avail yourself for God to use you. I'm not advertising the church or the workforce now for you to join any unit. Avail yourself to evangelize to your roommate now. You mustn't join the evangelism unit of the church before you evangelize. Avail yourself to helping the needy in the neighborhood. God has blessed you financially with words of wisdom. Encourage people. Lift them up. You, you, you get blessed in doing that. There is blessing in it. And I see God opening our eyes. Every scale of darkness is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. And our eyes are being opened to seeing what the Lord has prepared for us in, 
in, in the holy of holies in the name of Jesus. And the fourth one is sacrifice. Sacrifice. What are you offering? What do you have to offer on the altar? In the book of Second Chronicles, 1 verse 7 to 12, we see how David offered a thousand offerings. And that was the offering that provoked God to come down and ask him, my friend, my brother, my child, my son, what do you want me to do? What have you given to God that will provoke him to come down and give you a blank check with his signature on it? So, okay, you fill in the digits now. Solomon said to him, you gave me these people to lead. I don't know how to lead them. Mobsters everywhere. People ganging up against people, even against me. How do I lead them? Please, I need wisdom and understanding. And God said, you have not just asked for wealth. You've not asked for longevity. You've not asked for sound, um, sound mind. You've not asked for sound health. But you've asked for understanding. You've asked for wisdom to lead my people. Therefore, every other thing will be added to you. And that is how the Bible, the Bible recorded it that even till, till generations here to come, there will be no king as wealthy as him. His fame spread to the point that people around the globe were traveling to come learn from him. They said, it is well. Let's continue. Verse 6 of that scripture says, Solomon worshipped God at the bronze altar in front of the tent of meeting. He sacrificed, sacrificed a thousand world burnt offering. That was what provoked God. What is your offering today? I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about the material things you can see. It's spiritual. What is the Lord laying in your heart to drop? That offering, trust me, that offering might be malice. You just drop it on the altar and say, God, please dissect this. Let your consuming fire consume this. And you see God calm down. That offering you're dropping might be greed. You just want to collect, just like crab is always eating from here, eating from here. It might be greed. Or your case might not even be the negative. Your case might be money is what you love best. Like you've idolated money. You've idolated your job. You've idolated your spouse over God. God is telling you today, drop it on the altar and see my spirit of wisdom which is the manifold wisdom of Christ, begin to function in you. When the spirit of wisdom speaks, don't doubt. When everyone is sinking and he says, keep walking, just obey and continue because he has the capacity to walk you through. According to Zechariah 4 verse 6, it's not by power, it's not by might but by the spirit of God. And 1 Samuel 2 verse 9 made us to understand that by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. It is by the strength and the spiritual wisdom of God, domicile and functioning in us that we prevail. Every spirit of sleep, this minute in the name of Jesus, I curse you from the root. Amen. Amen. You will never see how it would have happened until wisdom makes a way. You will never know how it would have happened. You, you, you may have reached that dead end until wisdom, the wisdom of God, you invite God and say, Father, let your spirit show me the way. How will this happen? Genesis 41 verse 33 and Exodus 18, 14 to 21. You might be saying, ah, my visa will soon collapse. I don't know how to do this. Visa is not coming out. My brothers and sisters, my friends, my fathers and mothers, I'm here to tell you that there is nothing impossible with God. If only you will obey. I believe God is always speaking to us part time as he spoke to Elijah. He said, move, he moved. Wait, he waited. The thing is we are too busy to listen we're too busy to hear him when he's speaking. That still small voice in your heart is the wisdom of God telling you, move, wait, dance when you're hungry, jump, sing aloud, keep quiet, don't respond. 
The thing is we are so carried away with the things of the world that we don't even hear the voice. We are beclouded with all manner of things. We don't listen. We don't even listen to hear. And in the end, we pray and pray and we say, God is not listening. God is always listening. God is always answering prayers. But the thing is, are you listening to him? Are you listening to him? In summary, the spirit of wisdom is God's customized solution for your challenges. And it is not generic, like I said. It is personal. Lack of result is a product of lack of wisdom. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you and I, whatever he instructs you to do, do it. John 2 verse 5, at the um, wedding in Cana, when Jesus' mom went and said, the wine don't finish, the wine don't finish, what are we to do? Jesus was like, my time has not yet come. And the mom was like, oh, Kaliwali, that one you're saying is your own. Whatever he says, do it. Whatever Jesus instructs you, the disciples, do it. And the wisdom of God, which is Jesus, instructed the disciples to fill up the pot. I believe the disciples would be like, why is he asking us to fill pots with water when wine has finished? Why water? But they obeyed. Obedience. There is result in complete Total obedience. And I see God helping us to rely on him completely in Jesus' name. For wisdom to be operational in your life and Christian walk with God, your prompt obedience has to be in place. Because he's always speaking part time. He will tell you, wait, you wait. Move, you move. Note that prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom. You get the spirit of wisdom resting on you in prayers. My advice as I round up, do not downplay for any reason whatsoever a Christian that has the spirit of wisdom. Do not downplay. Any Christian, any believer that carries God, that carries Christ, it's not just wisdom when you come, you say, bend this thing, and they bend it. That's not the kind of wisdom we're talking about. We're talking about the person, Christ. Do not downplay such Christian. Do not downplay, else you will get burnt. And I see God helping our understanding today in the name of Jesus. Amen. This minute, I would just like up to be up on our feet. Respectfully. I just want us to make one prayer. I just want us to ask God, according to his word, to release the spirit of wisdom on us, on you. Personalize it. Ask for it. Thirst for it. Hunger for it. Because with wisdom, you live a, a, a hitch free life on earth. Trust me with wisdom in place in your life you will have to, to an extent no issues Solomon didn't get to fight any battle because wisdom was in place but his fathers they fought David was always fighting by strength but then when wisdom came when wisdom came Solomon standing there on the throne and God using him for his purpose. The war ceased. He didn't get to fight anymore. He didn't get to struggle. So we can see that evidently with wisdom, some battles are worthless. Like you don't get to fight them. They are not worth fighting for. The only time you fight is only when the kingdom of darkness is combating with the kingdom of light that's when you stand in the gap and you declare a thing and it will be established but every other thing wisdom will make them available for you so this minute I'm calling upon those that would like to give their lives to Christ you've heard this word it has come but it will only find practical expression in your life if your life is in accordance to his word 
if you have fallen apart, if you have drifted, now is your, is your time, now is your opportunity for you to realign again. If you want to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, or you want to rededicate your life again, your soul again to him, you gave your life to him and you took it back, now is the time. Please just lift up those hands. If you want to rededicate your life to him, you want to give your life to Christ afresh, please lift up those hands and we'll pray for you. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait for the next uh, minute. Don't wait for the next second. It might be too late. Come to the Lord this day and drop your body at his feet in exchange for that wisdom which is Christ. Open up today and let him come in. His word is saying that I am at the door of your heart and I am knocking. If only you will hear and open. If you, have make it, if you have made that decision of giving your heart to Christ, let me see your hand up, please, as I pray for you before I go. Just put your hands up as our Father in the Lord comes to pray for you. God bless you. Spirit of the living God. You have prayed for the spirit of wisdom. And I want you to apply this wisdom right now. Give me Isaiah 55 verse 11. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Just open your eyes. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says so shall my word which is Jesus be the goad forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it Please, I just want you to follow the instruction like he said. It may sound very strange, but do it. I will worship God. Don't sing along with me, all right? But I want you to say, Jesus, take over my joblessness. Whatever is specific to you, say, Jesus, take over my barrenness. Say, Jesus, take over my promotion. The thing that you want God to do. He said, because the word of God will not return back void. It must perform that which it has been sent. Please listen to what I want to tell you before we worship. God sent Jesus through pain. There was victory. Did you hear what I said? He went through pain and there was victory. But listen, now we are sending him in power. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Now we are sending him in, in power. There is super victory. He said, because greater works you will do. Did you hear what I said now? Let me repeat it again. God sent Jesus through pains. And that's why when he got to a point, he said, if it was possible, let this call pass over me. But there was victory on the cross. He said, it is finished. But now he's sending him in power and majesty. There is super victory. I want you to call upon the name Jesus to that situation. I want you to concentrate on what you're saying. He said, because looking onto Jesus, the author, is going to perfect your faith in this service. You cannot go back the same as we worship the King of glory. Speak the name of Jesus upon the situation. We lift your name. Don't sing with me. Just focus on what you're doing. Call upon Jesus. Don't sing with me. Just focus on what you're doing, please. Alright, don't be distracted by anyone.
focus on Jesus. His power will fall on you now. Because he said, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw men unto myself. As you trust in the release of his name upon that situation, the Lord is going to be answering you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Jesus, wherever you are. Librandu sika taligini, maku sita balu brandu sata, leku yesi paligini, makru bu supa talagini. Say, Jesus, take over that joblessness. more word of prophecy into your life if you're trusting God for a job you are getting the job in the name of Jesus oh, man. 
you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb your womb is open now in the name of Jesus you are trusting God for peace in your home receive peace now in the name of Jesus you are trusting God for promotion ah he said the name of Jesus will not come back void Amen. it must perform that which it has been sent Amen. when you least expect help in your office your help is coming now in the name of Jesus Amen. wherever you have been rejected by the power in the name of Jesus there is a turn around now in the name of Jesus Amen. wherever they have walked to you I call upon the name of Jesus the same mouth is celebrating you from now on in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever they have pronounced in the life of your children, I return it back to sender now in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has not spoken upon your family and your destiny, He said there is a reoccurrence of this situation upon our family. I use you as a point of contact. You are breaking loose right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He said, When I had sex in the dream, he said, When I go for the interview, he said, I fail. But I bring good news to you by the power in the name of Jesus. Every sexual dream by the power in the name of Jesus, I says now in the of Jesus he said while I was just running in the dream it got to a point I couldn't go back he said when I woke up he said things began to work anyhow but whatever is a stumbling block upon your life I break that wall by the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Amen. you have a plan but the enemy is saying in this year he said let me see how you are going to succeed by the power in the name of Jesus you will not only succeed but your enemy will come and say there is a God in your power that is bigger in the name of Jesus Amen. every line that they have drawn on your account I erase that line by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Every spirit of death that is hovering upon your family, I condemn you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand by the authority of God's word in Psalm 91 verse 16. He said, with long life will I satisfy you and show thee thy salvation. Listen to me. You may not mourn anyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please hear what I want to tell you. He said, God give it, God take it. But would God give and put a family in pain? Children who doesn't know anything they are in pains. I bring good news to you today. No man will die here in the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand by the authority of God's word. Every man that has been laboring in this place, as you agree with me, and your amen is giving the devil a knock on the head, from now on, you will not be called an infidel in the name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Ah. Any youth that is here, that you are a battle axe in God's hands, but the devil is manipulating you by the power in the name of Jesus from now on, your purpose is defined in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. I like this one. By the power in the name of Jesus, 
you will never say pastor i am tired instead you will say pastor join me to thank god in the name of jesus because whatever that will make you get tired the blood of jesus has cleansed it now in the name of jesus anyone that has gone for interview and they said they will call you I want to stand in the gap for you listen to what I'm praying if it's not the will of God let that job go but if it's the will of God whatever there is an hindrance because they have said they will call you they will call you in the name of Jesus did you hear the prayer that I prayed? Please, I don't want you to go back and say, Pastor, they said they will call me, but they are not calling me. It doesn't matter. But I'm telling you today, whatever that is yours, no man can take it from you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are awesome. We bless your holy name. If you believe that Jesus has heard you, why don't you shake your body and shout hallelujah. Amen. Let's stretch our hands towards our brother that the Lord has used mightily. That is the message of the cross. Highly inspired by the Holy Spirit. Say, Father, use him mightily in a time like this. Every word he has spoken, let his word not stand against him on the last day. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not be a ridicule in the name of Jesus. Whenever you speak, the heavens will recognize your voice. This is just the beginning of what God has started in your life. The next time you will mount this altar, as you speak, fire will be released in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every you that has minister. The Lord will keep you safe. The Lord will protect you from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we have prayed. Why don't you just tickle one neighbor and say, Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. Let's be kindly seated, please. Uh, before we take uh, just a brief announcement, I have a pastor here. He has asked me for three minutes, all right? Uh, he wants to share a testimony with us, all right? Uh, three minutes, we'll look at the time, huh? So in three minutes, uh, uh, is it in English or in Pakistan? In English. All right, sir. Please, sir, can you come forward, please? Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm very grateful, Pastor, local pastor, Pastor Colin. He gave me time to share testimony with you. Uh, I request my daughter, please come forward and help me. <laughs> uh, she is top nurse and uh, searching job in UAE. And hopefully with your prayers, she will get job. I mean. Today is the last Sunday with you all. So hopefully, <laughs> we will see you uh, one another uh, next time. So uh, my English is very poor, very poor, <laughs> okay? So if you uh, uh, find any mistake in my speaking, please forgive me. <laughs> because in Pakistan, uh, we used to uh, use uh, native languages. Only one person can speak English, write and read English. But we used to uh, speak in Urdu, Punjabi, Hindko, Pashto, uh, and other uh, local languages. So I want to share my testimony God uh, give me life. Why? 
because i uh, saw that three time face to face once i went to malaysia for a conference and a chronic infection developed in my body and uh, i come back from that point and when i restored two parties fighting in my congregation and i become in middle of them and uh, i got injured with uh, five bullet so god give me time <laughs> at third time uh, i did lot of work for my people in pakistan as you know only 2% christian in pakistan and other are majority is a fanatic muslim if i say 99% of fanatic muslim that is not wrong and we are living among them and uh, i distributed a grocery near about 4 or 5 lakh among the serving christian peoples at that time corona disease caught me and i felt very very uh, serious bimar ho gaya serious lail so <laughs> actually she will give me service as a harun <laughs> so i think why god give me life because he want lot of work from uh, by me in land of pakistan and praise the lord i surrender myself before lord and uh, people of redeemers rccg in uh, october 2020 and i went to nigeria in 2021 and i got baptism there at the third time <laughs> got baptism there in jordan uh, as we are uh, you know everyone try to get uh, baptism there so i got baptism there and praise the lord i'm working under the banner of rccg as a missionary in pakistan so every redeemer all over the world and especially uh for all of you can come in pakistan my heart and my house doors are open for every redeemers i can i will give for one week <laughs> not long time for one week food and accommodation accommodation you can live there for one year but food for one for one week i can give you there so uh, if uh, uh, anybody have wish to come in pakistan uh, can come at my home god bless you all thank you pastor thank you very much sir If you wish to relocate to Pakistan, you can see me after the service. Amen. You have free home for one year. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your pam- your testimony shall be permanent, Pastor, in the name of Jesus, and you will fulfill purpose and destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, for the Bible saw that was done shortly, we just quickly call the result. Uh Let's clap for brother Charles. Let's clap for brother Charles. Yeah. Clap for but I start sound out so that they can see you. You did very well. Let's clap for brother Charles. Yeah. He took the sixth position. Amen. Amen. The sixth position. All right. Uh the fifth position goes to brother Ade. Let's celebrate the King of Kings. Like the brother rightly said, it is not by power 
No, by mind. You are a teacher, sir. Uh, the other one, the fourth position is Brother Ope. Let's clap for him. And the fourth position goes to uh, Sister was always coming out the first time. Sister Chidima, let's celebrate God in our life. Third position. So between the first and the second, I don't know who I will call first. But I will call the two names, then I'll call the first. So automatically you know who the second is. So the runner-ups are Brother Joseph, the keyboardist. And Brother Chidebere. Where is Brother Chidebere? Please, can you rise up? Brother Joseph, don't play the keyboard again. You need to take your gift. So the first person in the Bible sword with 25 points goes to Brother Chidebere. Let's celebrate God upon his life. Hallelujah. Please, sir, can you come, please? I don't know what is here, but whatever is here shall multiply in the name of Jesus. More unction, more grace for divine exploit in the name of Jesus. So the teaching department, fix your antenna properly. Celebrate Jesus one more time. God bless you, sir. Just a quick announcement, please. Immediately after the service, we'll have the women's fellowship, please. All the women in the house. Is it women, sister, and everyone? As long as you are not a man, please wait behind after the service. Uh, next week promise to be awesome. Believe me, I don't want to, uh, how do they say it? Is it get a cart out of the basket or something? But if you will be in church next week for the ushers weekend, you will know that we have ushers in this church. Amen. They have been preparing, is it two months ago? So I was wondering what they are going to do. But believe me, don't miss next week's service. Promise to be super explosive in God's presence, both physically and spiritually. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Please, the last Friday of this month is term, the 9th of heaven prayers. And in that 9th of heaven prayers, we're going to be having testimonies. So I want to encourage you to be there. And on Sunday, we're going to be having the part 3 of the message of the cross. Righteousness exalts a nation. As we hear the word of God, the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Brother Peter. Somebody jump ahead for Jesus. Clap, 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 clap. Please, uh, after the service, if you want to see the pastor, please just meet uh, our brother, Mr. Johnny. Please, if you want to see the pastor, hallelujah. And if today is your first time of worshiping with us in the house, please, can you kindly be on your feet? If today is your first time of being in this house, I can see many new faces. Somebody turn your hands for Jesus. Clap, 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 clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother, this is Dominion Sanctuary Parish where God is doing wonders. As you can see from the morning to now, God has been, it has been joy overflow. Thank you for com coming and have your seat, please. Have your seat. Please, uh, the, the children, uh, they say that uh, one, uh, one of the child is doing birthday. So please, after the service, they will cut a cake. So please, for the five, five minutes, leave your kids around to join them. Uh, so let's be on, on an outfit. All the glory must be to the Lord for he is worthy of our prayer. Hallelujah. Share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Surely. 